Property Tribes TV joining our first ever Assets Members Day here in London and I'm joined by Asset CEO Stuart Law. Welcome Stuart, thanks for having us along. No problem at all, good now, to see you here. Good to be here. Um, we're delighted to be joining in partnership with Assets, and you're now sponsoring mm. our Buy to Let Tribe. Yes, we are. Um, great to have you on board. Why did you want to partner with Property Tribes? Well, you've got a great community of uh, intelligent, savvy property investors, or want to be property investors, and I think we share a common theme of wanting to educate people. We've been running these style of members days since, well, for 10 years, 2003. Mm -hmm. um, really bringing understanding to people mm -hmm. so they understand what they could be investing into. I think it's far easier for people to make decisions and make progress on their investment plans if they understand what they're buying absolutely. and why they're buying it. Make wise choices. Mm, absolutely. So today we're here and um, Nick and I are going to be speaking on landlords and the social web and I think the overall theme for today's event is probably be an investor not a speculator yeah absolutely that's that's been our mantra even through the boom years um, yield tells you where safety is yield tells you where future growth is low yields tells you where potential risk is even if it doesn't tell you what the risk is and higher yields potentially protect you in difficult times and you mentioned this very important point that yield is something that you can actually determine today. It's something you can measure. Mm, it's not yes. reliant on things that may or may not happen in the future. And I think that's such an important mm. point to get across because a lot of the sort of investor boom was built on capital growth. But you've always mm. sung from the yield hymn sheet. We have, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not that growth isn't exciting and useful. Mm. Um, it's that the core of a portfolio and all financial models whether it's property or otherwise have a core our core is good quality income producing properties mm -hmm. where the rents have an inflationary aspect to them um, and for that you need property in limited supply mm -hmm. and the UK is a fantastic example of that so UK residential we see as a, a strong core income generator in today's market mm -hmm. It got very difficult in the boom, uh, but now we're having a fantastic time sourcing very good quality property that's also at a good price and with a great rental income. What could be better than that? Good times. <laughs> so you're feeling very positive about the future because obviously there are mm. challenges, um, mm. but it's going to be the informed investor who survives those challenges. The informed investor and the investor with, uh, with some cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, cash has been king through these years uh, since 07 and it will remain so for some time. Mm -hmm. uh, the newly announced budget government uh, backed 95% mortgages aren't generally going to be available to property investors for buy to let, mm -hmm. but they could allow people to remortgage very effectively. We're seeing already that the government is going to allow that. So for creating capital to invest, the government incentives will work. Mm -hmm. um, but for buy to let mortgages, you're going to carry on needing reasonable deposits for the, for the near future, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where we are today. And you were also of the opinion that the government um, injection of cash could actually reduce um, the kind of discounts that you can achieve on property and actually influence mm. house prices going up, because with a lower deposit, people become mm. less price sensitive. Very much so, yes. Yeah, I mean, we've already seen investor pricing was much lower than high street pricing in the worst of the years in the credit crunch mm -hmm. um, because high street pricing wasn't about a transaction happening it was about people hoping to sell at that price mm -hmm. a lot so the it was relatively invisible what was going on to the high street um, in the investor community and investor pricing felt a lot more than high street pricing mm -hmm. it then bounced back a lot and we've seen investor pricing rising quite a bit higher than we've seen the house price indices going up Mm -hmm. So last year, house prices went up 3.5% on government figures, and indeed our own figures. But investor pricing, we suspect, was higher than that. Mm -hmm. um, and we think that's going to carry on now, this year and next. And house prices might be up 5 or 10% over the next year or so, with the new government uh, incentivised high loan-to-value mortgages for home buyers. But we think investor pricing will rise further. Mm -hmm. I mean, house builders aren't building what they used to build, nope. under 100,000 units a year and it's pretty likely they'll keep volumes tight to keep demand much higher than their supply mm -hmm. to allow them to raise prices further and make even better profits than they currently are. So I, I think investor pricing is going to be squeezed upwards considerably over the next year and we'll see, in terms of our sourcing world, 
our 8% yield typical that we're achieving on gross yields nationwide, we think that's going to be squeezed probably down to about 7% which implies greater price growth than in the retail market on the high street. Mm -hmm. Now, it's happening 4,000 miles away, but in mm. unprecedented, unprecedented events are unfolding in Cyprus as mm -hmm. we record this interview. Yes. Yeah. Now, what is your, what's your view on that? Do you think um, <laughs> it could make people see property as a safe haven? Mm. You know, this idea of the, the Royal Bank of you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's categoric. Um, I mean, it's been happening since the beginning. Since the days that uh, Royal Bank of Scotland was an hour away from being bust, all of the banks, in theory, if they had gone, would have gone as well. So from that day onwards, when it was clear that the banks wouldn't be allowed to go bust, people had scepticism over the safety of the banks regardless, because banks going bust was a very scary concept. Mm. Even if they were saved, the whole concept it could have happened was quite scary. And what we're now seeing in Cyprus with raids on savings mm. is part of the wheel being joined up. And this, this could happen over there, um, below 100,000 euros, maybe above, probably above, more certainly. Uh, other countries, could it happen? Mm. I think so. If it starts there, it could happen elsewhere. And I, I just don't think people really trust the banks that much mm. anymore. And we've seen since that day when RBS pretty much fell over, Property has become seen as one of the safest places to put your money, quite rightly so, and with an income stream, um, even more so. Fantastic. Well, on that very positive note, um, we'll say thank you very much for having us here today, and we're looking forward to speaking later on. And also, I'm um, delighted to have you on board powering yeah, our Buy to Let tribe, and we look forward to you as a contributor on Property Tribes as well. Yeah, no Thanks problem. very much to, to Stuart. Have a good day. Thank you.